Anyway, so uh, about a year ago, Google announced they were going to start charging for Google Maps. Everybody knows that. Uh, we were particularly frightened because we're, we're the people who have the website where we draw the, your, where your flight is on the map, and we use maps a lot. We were one of, definitely in the top 5%, which they're going to start charging. Looks like you're going to have to pay somewhere between 30 to maybe as much as $100,000 a month to use Google Maps. So we quickly started looking at alternatives. Um, and so we've been, I've been using Google Maps for a long time. Uh, they've been, FlightStats, we've been using Google Maps for a long time. I, I actually started using it even before they released the API. And it was actually pretty awesome when it came out. I mean, there was nothing else out there like it. And it's almost set eight years old now. It's used on a third of a million websites. That's an amazing coverage for an API. I don't think there's any other API that comes close to the number of people who use Google Maps. By the way, I'm going to try to not use the microphone. If I get too quiet, just like, raise your hand and tell me that. I'm, I should use the microphone? OK, OK. So Google Maps is the 800 pound gorilla. Um, but the downside of Google Maps is it kind of suppressed the development of alternatives. So there hasn't been much stuff going on. And also, when you're using Google Maps API, they kind of own you. You, know, you have no access to the source. Um, when they switched from V2 to V3, it was complete change. There was no upward compatibility. And they actually deprecated V2 before V3 had all the features of V2, which really pissed off a lot of people, including me. Um, and it's, as I said, it's a closed system. It's the, you have a, there's bugs in it. Um, you have no ability to fix those bugs. Or, you, know, you can work around them, but only by guessing what the code's doing. And especially in the early days, we did a lot of this stuff trying to figure out what Google Maps was doing and trying to fix around it. Um, their object mod model is very clumsy. One of the big things they did from V2 to V3 was completely re-engineer their object model, and they made it worse. So it was a little weird. And also, it's sort of a one-size-fits-all solution. It comes with three maps. You're not totally stuck with those, but you know you have to work around it if you don't want to. And the maps and the API are, are closely integrated, it's, so it's hard to uh, um, use other ones. And it's, it started out very automobile-centric. It's gotten better. but. Uh, it still is aimed at that, doesn't have a lot of information. So for, for somebody who's dealing with airplane flights and stuff like that, our needs are much different. So um, when you're using a mapping solution, there's actually three parts from it. First of all, there's a bunch of map data, so that's where uh, that's OpenStreetMap. And then if you're a large user of these things, you need servers to serve those maps. And finally, on the browser, there's a map API, which is, and this, in this talk, I'm sort of I'm going to go through all three of them, but I'm going to work from the bottom up. You know, in Google Maps, you sort of get all three in one. In fact, you're not even aware that there's a difference between them. You say, here, create me a map, and it knows where the map file is coming from, it knows what server they're on, it knows where the data came from, and so forth. And when you try to switch away, you have to solve those problems yourself. So on the API side, um, we spent a lot of time evaluating different APIs to see what we should go towards. And Here's the, the four. One of the things that surprised me is that there's a lot of mapping APIs out there. These are sort of the top ones, and yet there's probably, again, as many mapping APIs out there of various kinds. Um, and so our, our evaluation was Open Layers is a very mature, it's a very powerful mapping system. It was definitely written by GIS, GIS type people. You know, you have to be aware of projections and things like that. Um, so it's somewhat complicated and large. It doesn't really run well on mobile devices most of the time. So, and we, we are a heavy user of mobile devices, obviously, since we're targeting travelers. So um, we looked at Leaflet. Uh, it's newer. It's changing rapidly. Um, even since we started using it, they've made a lot of changes to it. Like last night, I was working on some code, and I realized, oh, they just added something that solves this whole problem that I spent a month coding over you know, a while ago. But, it's nice because you know you can go in and you can look at the source. There's a lot of um, committers to it, so it is changing rapidly, uh, and it has a really nice object model. So there's also modest maps. Modest maps started out um, 
for Android Flash. Now it's converted over to about eight different platforms. It's really nice. You can run it on the server, you can run it on the client. And it's actually a good alternative. We didn't go with it, um, but you know, you could. And Polymaps uses vector graphics instead of rendering image tiles. So it renders uh, geometry directly on the client. Uh, problem for us was that not all of what the clients we were interested in support SVG. So, um, so we went with Leaflet, but I want to say that all four of those are actually good alternatives. Um, and depending on your needs, you might want to go with a different one. I actually really like Leaflet, um, but uh, I have to say that the other ones, there's, there's not really anything wrong. Um, one of the things that surprised me was about two weeks after we actually had done the switch over our, of our entire website away from Google Maps and onto Leaflet, um, that's when Google realized that they had set their pricing way too high and lowered the price by 70%. And so I was suddenly nervous, like, uh-oh, you know, just did all this work to switch away and now they've lowered the price of something that actually wouldn't be that bad. So I asked everybody in the company, are there any regrets about switching away from Google Maps and you know, talk to the programmers who have done all the work of integrating it back in with our main web pages and they all said, no, we like it so much better. So that was one of the things that really surprised me was that these other solutions are actually superior in many ways. And um, I think a lot of people aren't looking at these things just because they're, they've always used Google Maps and they're kind of stuck on it. Um, one of the things that surprised me also was that when I started looking into comparing these different APIs, there wasn't a lot of information out there. I found two articles on people who had switched from Google Maps to something else, but they were just talking about their technical details, and there was no general information. So I decided to give a talk <coughs> on this at Web Visions. And um, interestingly enough, as soon as that was announced, I got contacted by online magazines that say, can you write an article for us? Um, so there's not much information out there. So if you'd like to see that article, then <coughs> you're up for it. Um, and also, most recently, I gave a, a much longer talk about the source bridge. So, so that was the API side of it. The next stage is you need a map server. And there are free open app, map, app servers, excuse me, map servers for this. MapQuest runs MapQuest Open, which they not only is it free, but if you have high demand, they'll put you on a better server and stuff like that, which is an awesome thing to do. And I know people who are using their maps. Um, our wasn't really suitable for us because we're very heavy users of maps. Um, you can also just use other people's map servers. You can, uh, there's a number of commercial map servers. There's people here from both CloudMate and Mapbox, especially Mapbox. And they will host maps for you, and you can customize those maps, which is an amazing feature. Um, or you can use your own server. And, uh, and actually, what we went with is we're, we're storing our maps in the cloud. Um, so you can use other people's servers. This is sort of an interesting point. And the, the legal questions are still kind of weird, and I, I wish this would be clarified better. Um, almost all map file servers are unsecured. So if you can figure out the URL, to the map files, you can just use their map files. There's nothing stopping you from doing that. Um, now, when you use their map files, they can see that your application is using those because they'll get the refer field. And it's not clear whether they would cut you off. I imagine if you started crashing their server, they probably would. Um, so, and there's no reliability guarantees. Even the MapQuest server um, goes down, the MapQuest open one. And the legal issues, it's not clear whether it's legal to use it. I mean, I can actually use Google Maps tiles, and there doesn't seem to be any legal restriction from using it, although it's not clear if that's legal. I mean, it's interesting that the Open there comes with a plugin that will show you Google Maps tiles. Um, but uh, I still have not been able to find any legal thing about can I actually use those, or is, is that against the terms of Sort of. And the same thing with a lot of other maps. There's lots and lots of maps out there. So what did we do? As I said, we were storing everything up on uh, S3, cloud front in front of it, for our, for our <coughs> um, 
Um, we actually aren't using a file server. We're just storing them in a directory structure using the Slippy naming format. And um, there's some, that's really simple to put up, but it makes it a real pain in the ass to, to manage those files. Um, when you get to fairly complex, well, fairly deep zoom levels, you can have trillions of tiles. And trying to manage trillions of files and upload them, download. I actually just uploaded um, a zoom level 11, which is sort of city level, you know, not even that detailed, and it took um, two weeks to transfer the tiles to the server. So you can, and, and every zoom level takes four times longer. So like go to 12, okay, now it's no longer two weeks. It's you know coming up to two months and you know so forth. So it's. Uh, you can imagine that, but that's not really a good solution. So we have plans to switch to a caching tile server eventually. And right now the leading contender is tile stash for that, but we're still investigating. Um, one of the fun things about this, I found an awful lot of really wonderful maps out there. Um, Stamen Design's terrain map is, is one of them. It's unfortunately only in the US, but I hope someday that they do a worldwide one. <laughs> Gorgeous map. Uh, Mapbox just came out with a terrain map. It is global. And, uh, and actually, for our road map, we're using a map from the University of Heidelberg. And that was kind of interesting. When we, when I, we were going to use it, it was unclear what their policy was on other people using it. And we weren't going to be beating on their server. We were going to copy it over to ours, of course. And so I sent them an email, and they were like, they were so excited that somebody was going to use their maps. They were really, and in fact, we found a bug in their maps. They, they had some errors in the way that they were drawing lakes, especially like the Great Lakes in the U.S. on certain layers. And they fixed it for us, and they fixed it like in a day. It was amazing. They were like very responsive, so it was great. Um, and we, we actually have some of our own maps as well. So uh, a week from today at NASIS, so on Saturday afternoon, going to be teaching a workshop in conjunction with, uh, with some people from, from TriMet on how to build stuff with this, and we're actually going to work through it. So if people are interested, I think there's actually, it's almost full, but I think there was a, like a couple of spots open, and it's pretty cheap. If you're attending ASUS, I think it's $10 to go to the workshop. And if you're not, I think it's 30 so it's not, not bad. Um, so I, I really wanted to talk about this. Uh, well, as I mentioned before, there's this huge demand for information on <coughs> switching from Google Maps to another solution. And I still feel that. I mean, I, I actually have been requested to give a longer talk at other conferences and stuff. I'm kind of getting tired of it. But um, I'm really surprised that there aren't more people going after this. I mean, this is a huge opportunity, even with the lower price. There's good reasons to switch away. And because Google announced those higher prices, there's been a lot of development on other APIs. And I think they're definitely ready for prime time. Uh, the biggest problem is just that it's sort of a, there's too much choice. There's too many APIs. Once you get the API, you have to decide on where you get the maps from. You know, if you want traffic, it's another fight. If you want routing, there's another fight. Um, and I really think that the open source community should try to take advantage of this opportunity by presenting something that is a direct competitor to Google Maps. And I think they could actually, because right now, if I were, if somebody came to me and said, I want to do a, a map mashup for my website that combines, you know, this data on a map or whatever, um, it, would, it would actually be difficult for me to tell them to use an open source solution because it's just so much more work for them. And for small users, Google Maps is still free. So I think, you know, we need to do something about this. You know, so if somebody were, and, and all the text's already there, you can already do this. Somebody just needs to bundle it up into a single package that has a few maps, talks to a server that's free for the map tiles, has traffic, routing, maybe some weather stuff, things like that. And that would be an awesome thing to have out there. And also, we need to provide help for people switching. You know, anybody who switches should write more articles about what they went through. And, so that's it. Um, all the slides are already up on SlideShare. Um, so if you didn't write down some of those URLs, you can get it now. And flight stats is, is definitely higher. So. Thank you. Do you have any questions?
Yeah, we we definitely we have a, an API. The, the, there's a free account, but it's for evaluation purposes. We can't actually legally give away any of this data because we're 